Hi everyone, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlleryTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at the Maxwell Boltzmann distribution curves. Now it sounds absolutely horrendous but it's not that bad actually um, and it links in with the kinetics topic so it's to do with um, the amount of energy a particle has and how quick then particles move. So um, we're actually going to look at what the curve is. We're going to look at two different scenarios, one at low temperature and one at high temperature. And we're going to explain the features of the curve as well. So you absolutely know and you understand exactly what's going on because these are really popular in the exam. So basically a Maxwell Boltzmann distribution is a curve that represents the energy of all particles in a reaction. Now imagine if you were in a shopping centre or a high street or somewhere and you have loads and loads of people in the shopping centre, so in the in the actual mall part. So imagine you had about, let's say you had a big uh, 100 people, 100 shoppers in the, in the high street. So all them shoppers, you'll have some shoppers which will spend um, a long time looking in windows and they'll move through quite slowly or they'll take their leisurely stroll through the street. And you get some people who maybe are going through at a reasonable pace uh, and you get some people who might even uh, walk at a really brisk pace and might move a little bit quickly. So everybody though moves at a different speed but if we take an average of them people and um, they'll all move at one particular speed as an average. Now we can do the same uh, with particles as well. Particles never move at one speed. So if we had a beaker of particles with 100 particles in there, some of them will move really slowly, some of them will move at about an average speed, a medium speed, uh, and some of them will move really quickly. Now, um, this links in with um, the um, collision theory. So um, if you're not sure what collision theory is, we just click on the link below, um, and there's a video on collision theory. But for this purpose, I'm going to assume that you know uh, about collision theory and the effects of temperature on the rate of reaction. So uh, we're going to look at, and um, this is our Maxwell Boltzmann distribution. So you can see we have uh, the number of molecules on the uh, on this um, y axis, and on the x axis we have kinetic energy. This is the energy, the moving energy, effectively that the particles have. Now, if we just um, analyze what this curve means, and then we'll look at the effects of temperature on it. You can see this is the distribution of particles. So imagine the area underneath this graph represents the uh, particles with a particular amount of energy. So the lower down we go here, then the lower the energy, lower the energy the particles have. So you can see if we have 100 particles, most particles have this amount of energy, which is at the top here. So this is an average. So on average, the particles, 100 particles in our beaker, will actually have this amount of energy at the top. And um, some particles will have a small amount of energy. So, for example, if we drew a line there, we'll have a small portion of particles with a low amount of energy. And again, if we come over onto this side, um, we have some particles with loads of energy. Um, so these are the energies over here. So that's basically what the curve shows us. Now, in terms of the um, specific points, because I might get you to do this in the exam, is to draw a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. You've got to make sure you get specific points correct. Always draw your Maxwell Boltzmann from the zero zero position, um, and this basically means that no particles have no kinetic energy. So uh, we've got to start at the zero zero position. So they must have some kind of energy. Um, now you must have a peak, which, like I say, is the majority of the particles have this amount of energy, um, which is down here. So that's what that means. Uh, and you must have a curve. That, um, that actually slopes down but never touches the axis at the bottom. So you can see this line here never actually touches there. So that's really, really important. And on some distribution curves, you might have a point which is marked EA. Now EA stands for activation energy. And this is the minimum amount of energy required for a reaction to occur. Now you can see here at this point, any particles above this point here actually have enough energy to, to react. Now you can see that actually the vast majority of the molecules in here don't actually have enough energy to react. And most of them just hit off each other and just bounce away. So only a small proportion actually have that enough energy. Now what we can do is we can actually um, change the temperature of our reaction to try and either increase the amount of um, successful collisions that we have or the chance of a successful collision uh, or we can decrease the temperature to either slow that down. And I'm going to show you what effect temperature has on this reaction. So um, we're going to start with a higher temperature. So imagine this is a temperature, this curve shows a reaction at 25 degrees Celsius. 
We're going to draw another curve to show a higher temperature. So let's say we increase it to maybe by 20 degrees to 45 degrees Celsius. Now what happens is if you heat up their particles, they get more kinetic energy, they move around a lot more, uh, a lot quicker, and um, therefore you are more likely to get more collisions. Now, some of them collisions may be successful, and we're going to draw the curve here. Now, this is very common in the example and to ask this. So we're going to start again, our, uh, we're going to draw it in red to show a higher temperature. We're going to start from the zero mark, and we're going to draw our distribution. Now, what you would expect is more particles have more kinetic energy. So the average uh, particle will be somewhere over here. So we're going to draw it out there. So we're going to draw a line going across. It's going to peak there and it's going to drop. And we're going to draw it across, going across there. Now, as you can see, the peak, the actual peak has shifted to the right. We have particles, more particles with energy that was greater on average than what it was at the lower temperature. So that's why it's slightly over to the right. Um, another feature to point out is actually it's lower than the other one. Uh, that's important because the area underneath this red line has got to be the same as the area underneath the black line. Remember the area tells us the number of particles in our container. When we've heated them up, we still have the same number of particles. Um, it's just that the particles have got, on average, more energy than they had before. And if you look over here, here's our activation energy at the cooler temperature, which is the black line. When it was warmer, you can see that actually our activation energy, if I was to extend that dotted line there, our total activation energy originally um, has actually increased. So if I draw red markings in there, now our energy is actually the red line and it includes the original area of the reaction at the lower temperature. So you can see here that actually we have a much more particles or more particles that have energy greater than the activation energy. Uh, and that means that um, our reaction will proceed, uh, well, our reaction will proceed at a quicker rate because you have more particles with the energy that's required, the minimum energy required. So this comes on to this scenario here where we say a small temperature increase, which is what we've done here, like a very small amount, leads to a large increase in rate because we have a lot more particles, as you can see there, with energy greater than the activation energy. But it is important that you need to explain things about the height and the shift of that peak to the right. That is very, very important, and it is flatter. You've got to make sure you draw it specifically. Okay, if we go into the last one, which is a lower temperature. So again, we're going to compare it to this black line here. That was our room temperature. Um, now let's say if we drop that by 20 degrees and we go down to about 5 degrees Celsius, um, the temperature, obviously the particles will have less kinetic energy, um, and so therefore your curve will look something like this. We're going to start at the zero mark, all of them start at zero, but our curve is actually going to rise up steeply, and it's going to peak much, much sooner. It's going to stay on the left-hand side of the black curve, and it's going to drop, drop down there. But again, we're not actually touching the axes there. Now you can see the difference. The blue curve at the lower temperature has actually been pushed over to the left. So most of the particles on average, or the particles on average, have energy lower than what it was uh, originally. So that's why it shifted over to the left. Um, but um, you can see here that actually where the blue line is beyond the activation energy, uh, and I'll just colour that in, in blue, so I'll just go the other way just to make that really clear. You can see that the amount of particles with energy greater than the activation energy has actually de decreased dramatically. So again, a small temperature change, so a small temperature decrease leads to a large decrease in rate as well. So temperature has a large effect on that. But you've got to remember how to draw these things here. And make sure that if you've got a lower temperature, the peak is the, the top of the peak is slightly to the left and is taller than the original peak, and if you have a higher temperature, the peak flattens out. Uh, and it's crucial, the reason why we have that is because the surface area, sorry, the area underneath the curve has got to remain the same, because that tells us how many particles um, there are in our actual reaction, and that remains the same. It's just the distribution of energy in them particles has changed when we change the temperature. But um, that's it. Lots of points to remember. Make sure you practice loads of questions on these. Uh, I hope that helps. That's it. Bye.